Thanks. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chair. In Senator Sanders' opening questions of Dr. Murthy, he suggested, yes, we've done a lot, but we need to do more. But Mrs. Knees, you made it clear that we are actually on a trajectory to do more. Yes, we've put in these programs. The, for example, you mentioned your testimony of school in Louisiana that's very successfully instituted a Medicaid-based clinic for those with mental health. And that now there's another one opening. And presumably there'll be another and another and another. So, uh, so sometimes it's the potential of that which is being realized, which is more important to allow it to be realized than creating a whole new program. So, so I say that, though. My question is, are my assumptions correct? That the programs that we put in, put in place, for example, to help schools use Medicaid to pay for services, is that increasing in terms of its implementation? And do you suspect that it will continue to increase? Senator, thank you so much for that question. And, and we certainly hope that with this Medicaid guide and a new technical assistance center that will be announced shortly, that uh, we are going to make it easier for more and more school districts to figure out how to access Medicaid so they can, in fact, do just the things that you're talking about. Um, we've seen a number of great examples across the country of, um, of partnerships. Uh, we were just in Delaware. So let me stop, because I understand you've got these examples, mm -hmm. but are you getting, uh, I, I, what I'm really asking is, do you have the interest being shown to expand upon these examples to make this even more widely a used? A absolutely. So the potential is being realized, and I the, think that's the, the point I want to emphasize. Yes, sir. Now let me speak to something which perhaps is not being realized, and maybe you can't speak to it directly. But in the Bipartisan um, Safer Communities Act, passing because of Republican support, there was a billion dollars for f uh, funding physical safety of schools. In one sense, we're trying to address the front end. How do we keep kids from having a problem? But we're also trying to address the back end. A kid does have a problem and comes in and tries to commit violence or someone else does. Um, and um, um, as far as I know, the rules to uh, tell schools, districts, how to implement physical hardening of their schools has only been promulgated into three different states. Why have those rules not been promulgated? Okay, this is what is allowed to physically harden your school in case there's somebody who comes to attempt to commit violence. Why have those not been promulgated to all 50 states? So, Senator, uh, thank you for that question. The Stronger Connections grant that we um, uh, released the funds to states last September, and states are, we were doing listening sessions with key stakeholders um, on what kinds of things they wanted to use those funds for. And our guidance um, that was put out in November and again revised this past March um, does help schools understand what are our allowable um, activities. What we're hearing from states... Let me stop you. Again, being specific with my question. Yes, sir. I was called by my state superintendent that they were being told that they could not use the money to physically harden a school. I spoke with the secretary, and he said he would correct that, but I'm told, maybe I'm wrong, that the correction that says that schools may use the money, as it Congress intended, by the way, Correct. to physically harden was only promulgated to three states, Louisiana being one of them. Uh, is that, am I correct on that or am I wrong? Uh, Senator, I'm not, I'm not aware of, my understanding is from what we've heard from states that they have used these funds for things to increase the physical security of schools. Um, now that's different from hardening. Uh, so if I can ask, can you get back with me on the particulars of that most updated information? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, next, um, uh, it's been suggested several times that there are things which subject children to ridicule that can otherwise make them prone to these episodes of depression, et cetera. I'm uh, very concerned about the issue of dyslexia. I think anyone that has a child stands up that can't read in front of a class and is ridiculed because she can't read understands that pain. Absolutely. Now, there's a lot of money put out in these, uh, in these bills to help school districts do catch-up learning. And I mentioned dyslexics because they're particularly vulnerable. Uh, here's an article, though, from the Times from three days ago. Schools receive billions in stimulus funds that may not be doing enough Pandemic aid was supposed to help students recover from learning loss, but results have been mixed. And it points out that there was little guidance given to schools beyond you shall spend 20% of it. There are some schools that have put in very good programs, 
uh, small focused learning and others that apparently have not. Um, any comments on that? And specifically, uh, what can knowing the money's about to run out, but what can we do now to try and get schools to use best practices as opposed to just frittering dollars away? Right. Um, Senator, one of the key elements of the federal special education law is child find. And uh, one of the things that states have struggled with that we are working very closely with them on to address is making sure they are identifying and serving any eligible child. And certainly students who have dyslexia are, are among those kids that we want I to see. I get that, but, but there's best practices that does not appear as if they were uni universally adopted. That's correct, sir. We're, and we are working on, on specific guidance on these specific issues so that states can fully understand what their responsibilities are so they can make that, so that we can have a different situation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Senator Hassan. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair.